Hi there, friends. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. I just want to do an update on Eclipse events because there's been a big dramatic event that happened that is very close to my heart that I want to share with everybody. Um, so today is the lunar eclipse. Today, the 28th, is the lunar eclipse. And I will go into a little highlight on what effects this eclipse should have on every astrological sign so that you can get some personalized insight from this. Um, I'm not really that kind of channel, but the um, but I you know certainly have that background, and so I would like to share that with you guys to help you get some understanding of what's going on, what you might be experiencing right now in your life. Um, and I'm wearing my uh, my little uh, golden moon in honor of the eclipse, which of course I've had um, almost all my life. So uh, the the big event that is really really um, you know, devastating is that uh, Anarcho, I mean, not Anarchopulco, Acapulco, the city of Acapulco was hit by a category five, category five um, hurricane on the 24th, right? 25th, I don't know, but it was, uh, it was right in this window. There's three days before the eclipse. So today's the 28th, basically starting on the 24th or 25th, the, um, is the most intense window for events related to eclipse activity, things that are going to be happening in your life or in anybody's life related to the eclipse. And of course, we've also seen increased activity in the uh, abroad, you know, in the Middle East with the U.S. Uh, and bombing going on in Iran and Syria and an increase of war activity, right? So this is, in fact, the beginning of, you know, W, I can't say that out here, but it's already started. I mean, it's my my members knew this was coming, but I mean, I think I've been pu publishing this here for a very long time, but as much as I can say on YouTube. So, but the uh, hurricane that hit Anarcopulco is devastating. I hit Acapulco, it's devastating. I keep saying Anarcopulco because I have a video from Jeff Berwick and I will link it in the comments section below. Um, please go there. Please watch it. Please donate to Acapulco. To they are the only people giving aid to Acapulco, which was devastated. The entire city, uh, every poor neighborhood flattened because these houses just would get ripped out of the ground um, by a strong wind. And hurricanes have hundreds of miles per hour winds, 200 more, you know, or faster. Hurricanes are very destructive. As I'm sure you've know, you know, some of you may have been in a hurricane or may have some personal experience with hurricanes, but they're terrifying. And I was very little when I was in a hurricane. I was about five years old. It's a, you know, I, I have dev donated to Anarcho, you know, to the, the Anarchopulco efforts, which is Jeff Berwick and his team. Um, and that team at Anarchopulco uh, are helping. They're pretty much the only people providing aid to Acapulco, which has been completely devastated. The photo of one of the main beaches, which I recognize is the beach my son learned to surf on. I mean, I know that beach really well is just wiped out. And the, uh, the event, you know, I mean, I've been to an Acapulco several, quite a few times, and I spoke there last year. So I, you know, and I know these people and I, you know, I don't, of course, you're never going to love everybody in any crowd, but the crowd itself, the intention of that group itself is absolutely 100%, you know, for this, for the aid to Acapulco is 100% sincere, right? I 100% believe that they are doing what they're doing because most aid efforts, of course, are not. Most aid efforts, the money does not go to who they say it goes to. Uh, I was at like a, a Salvation Army or something the other day doing like Halloween, you know, like some costume shopping and stuff. And um, <clears throat> as I was checking out, I said to the girl, you know, the, this... The Goodwill, I think it's the Goodwill, or the Salvation Army, one of them is a private company, and the CEO pays himself three billion, with a B, dollars a year. And she's like, oh, well, the money goes to, you know, this charity for the blind or whatever. I was like, no, it doesn't. This money does not. It's the perfect business model. They take donations in for free, and then they market to whatever they can get for it, and then they sell it to the public, and they pay their staff almost nothing, and... 
the money is not going to those charities. These are scams, almost every single one. Oh, got it. The one I hate the most is the puppies one. That money doesn't go to help it. I mean, a penny or two on every dollar will go to the actual charity. It is mostly a profit making venture for the companies that do it. But this is not the case with the um, people in Acapulco. They're going there. They're sending that money. It is buying food. It is buying, you know, um, water. It is buying, um, saws and uh, what are the chainsaws so they can get in and out of the city. People are trapped. People have the, you know, by now it's been a couple of days. Food is out. Every store has been devastated. Everything was wiped out. Everything was scrubbed. So I really, um, please, uh, send some donation to that, uh, that cause because it will go to them and it will help them and they need it. And one thing I know spiritually is when you give, you are given to the universe will give back to you. So, I mean, I donated, uh, you can donate in crypto, you can donate in cash, but this is a really a sincere thing from my heart. And the, the thing that is most devastating is there's a, there's a, um, a uh, orphanage called the Marsh Children's Home that they've done amazing work with in Acapulco. They've really done a lot to with these children, with these orphans to help them. Um, I know that I did, uh, I posted it here on my channel, a couple of uh, videos where I was working with, uh, and my son also was, was building with them, with the, uh, with um, uh, Brad, who uh, did, did the, um, and I'm, blanking on his last name right now, but he did the earth build, the earth ship build, um, which I don't know if that's still around either now after everything, but uh, the, uh, this storm was not a natural storm. This was not a real weather pattern. Okay. This, you know, do you get it yet? Do you understand what's going on? Because this was not a natural thing. And it, the, the storm had no rain. It was just, a, there was no warning. There was no radio, no media. Nobody was warned about it. People went to bed that night and basically woke up to devastation as these hundreds of miles per hour winds came, um, through Acapulco. So we did, you know, when I was there, we were building and I was working with some of the children from the Marsh Children's Fund with, um, with the Earthship project where they built an Earthship. And this is teaching those kids how to build a, a structure, a living structure that is sustainable out of what's available. So it, it turned out beautifully. It was great. It's now, it ended up being used as an Airbnb with the, um, the, the, the site that where the, uh, event was held, where an Acapulco, an Acapulco was held and it was raising money for the Marsh Children's Fund. And it was amazing, you know, a beautiful thing. So, you know, there's been some amazing work done for that, uh, those groups of children who really don't have parents to take care of them. So, um, and this really gets to me. So, you know, they don't know what's happened to those kids right now in Acapulco. They don't know what's happening with them. So w this money is going to go to those efforts to help Acapulco and to find the children and to find out what's going on there. There's a media blackout. There's no video coming out. There's no uh, media attention to it. Nobody's talking about it. And the government is doing nothing, nothing, not a thing to help Acapulco. So they really haven't provided any aid at all. At least last I heard, they may have changed that by now, but and if they did, it's about time. So these people really need help. So that's one of the reasons that I was, uh, sorry, I'm getting choked up, but this really, um, does touch me especially stuff about the kids, right? These kids who have nobody and need help. So, okay. Whew. All right. So this is a very real thing and we need to, uh, as adults, we need to do something for this. And also, um, the, uh, you know, so that money will go to the cause. And as I said, when we give, we are blessed and we don't do it to be blessed. We do it because it's the right thing to do. But please, I mean, if you can give a hundred dollars, give a hundred dollars. If you can give more than that, give more than that. Please donate to this cause. Um, even if everyone was to just donate us, you know, don't donate what you can. If you can't give a hundred, don't do that, but do what you can, right? You will be blessed for this. This is what, the spiritual principle of tithing is you don't have to give it specifically to a 
church, but you need to give to your community. And, and that is a percentage of your efforts, whether that's financial or your energy or your life or whatever you're doing, you need to, this is a spiritual law. Those who do not give actually end up suffering quite a bit. And that brings me to some of the other events of this eclipse. All right. And I will get into all of you and what this uh, probably means for each of you and each of your sign. And the, probably the best way to look at this would be with your rising sign, because I'm going to talk about this eclipse through the houses, right? Through the signs and through the houses. So uh, first of all, one of the, uh, so this eclipse is in Taurus. It's at five degrees Taurus, which is a financial sign. It is the sign of what we have, what's ours, our resources, and of course, spiritual principles around money, right? Spiritual principles around finance, which is why I'm making it really clear to you that when we give, it comes back to us. Okay. It really does. And give what you can. Don't give what you can't. Don't give out of, don't give what you, you know, need for yourself to survive. But if we're in the West, we have something we can give. I don't, if you have a home over your head, if you have uh, lights on, if you have heat, if you have food in your refrigerator, then you have excess that you can give. So there, you, there is never an excuse, even if we feel like, in fact, <laughs> it's a spiritual thing that um, I've known people who've completely changed their uh, their financial picture by giving away the, because they couldn't give, they didn't know how, and they took that a hundred dollars and went and gave it away because it turned around their, um, their own finances to do this because it is a spiritual principle. So this is number one is that we want to be in alignment with the spiritual principles of resources, of money, of uh, what we have, what's ours. And these are the, this is the domain of Taurus is what we have, what we can call ours, right? Taking stock of what's ours and what we have. And if you really went through all your stuff, you probably have a lot. If you have a, you know, if you have toys, if you have stuff in the garage, you have clothes you don't wear. I mean, these are all things that we have in the West that uh, is a lot more than many, many people in Mexico. Many people in Mexico live a much more simple life, but um, also many are happier than uh, those who have a lot. It's not about what you have. It's about what you do with it and how you, um, your, your relationship to it and your appreciation and gratitude around it. That's an also a very important and powerful spiritual law for success is to give appreciation. Right. And I, and I like appreciation almost more than the idea of gratitude because appreciation is, it just has a better feeling to it. Gratitude has been sort of overused as this, oh, it's a punishment. You have to sit down and write your gratitude list. And you know, it's a good thing to write a gratitude list, but appreciation is a feeling of, you know, stepping outside, breathing in the air, looking at the trees, feeling connected and ah. <sighs> just being happy about that connection, right? To all that is. And um, I spoke last uh, in the last video about Buffalo and the Buffalo medicine and all the appreciation energy that Buffalo is about and how that brings in this great prosperity, right? So, and there's this, this thundering herd feeling with Buffalo. So um, getting back to the idea of eclipse events here. So the, the Taurus eclipse is bringing up hidden information, bringing up secrets, bringing up people, you know, revealing who you may not, might not really be able to trust around finances. So there have been, so this is uh, revealing some, some shenanigans in the finances. And of course, if you're paying attention to the financial um, YouTube channels or financial news, there's a lot going on around the bonds market and the treasuries and precious metals, you know, and prices going here and there and all of that. And nothing has really done anything major, even though there's a lot of news saying major things are coming. Nothing has really popped off totally yet, apart from Bitcoin making a big surge last week. But this, um, and you know, this is, there's a lot of fear though, a lot of worry. People are very concerned. Actually, the big thing that's going on is JP Morgan sold millions of his shares of his, of, of his bank, JP Morgan, not a sign of confidence, not a vote of confidence in the financial picture, right? Not a vote of confidence in his own bank. So just so you know, uh, that, uh, big insiders are not feeling like the economy is in the world's best condition. So 
they may know something, right? But does it mean that everything is going straight up or straight down? No, there's a lot more complexity to this picture and my members know about that. Of course, if you are interested in my membership, please look below in the description box for the links and that will l allow you to go and uh, learn more about the membership and also sign up. I um, will be doing a channeled message about all these disasters that we've been having in the world and sort of more in-depth stuff about what's behind that. That's the channeling I'm doing for November. Well, I do a channeling every month, so it's the October channeling. And then the timing report for November will be coming out in the next couple of days, next day or two. So I will be uh, doing a video that explains what's coming for November and what we can expect in November. We have all these news stories saying everything is a disaster, the economy is a disaster. And so I will dive into the timing of what's going on in November and what we can expect out of the November movements because we're in a lot of uncertainty right now. And so I think uh, it's very, very valuable for you to have some insight about what that uncertainty might be bringing, right? So to, and so, you know, that's what I'm doing in terms of the channeling on these natural disasters and what's really behind it. And there's some stuff we may know that is behind it and other things we don't exactly know what is. So I'm trying to get more information, right? Beyond what we really know. I'm, I'm asking the guides, I channel the guides, my spirit guides. Um, they come to me in a form that are, is good to, for me to recognize. Um, other people might see their spirit guides as angels, but I, and I mean, if you are channeling a higher force, which I am. I'm absolutely connected to the benef benevolent beings of the good, right? I channel um, a Native American Indian chief named uh, Red Mountain. And uh, the other is a very private sort of being, but um, the these are spiritual, you know, angelic forces. And I also channel my great uncle who was, I mean, I get messages from him. I don't really channel him, but I get messages from him. He was uh, one of the world's uh, most famous economist when he was alive. And he uh, he's credited with part of this crazy formula, this mathematical formula they're using to keep this crazy system alive. So the, this is who I channel. And if you want more about my story, of course, you can go to my site and you can learn more about that. But uh, yeah, I will be pulling through a message about what, what is really going on with all of this uh, you know, do you see it? Do you see it? Do you see what's going on like this Hawaii event and what's going on with Acapulco and this uh, Category 5 hurricane that came out of nowhere, which is literally impossible, and there was no warning and just suddenly showed up with just wind and no rain and brought in a lot of water from the ocean. So um, I will be uh, channeling on that. But the let's talk about you guys. Let's talk about what this uh, revealing of secrets, okay, revealing of hidden information. So this is actually part of what's going on, you know, and what, I, what we're talking about here is that uh, some of these things that are going on on the physical level with, uh, you know, there were all kinds of wildfires in Canada. Um, and who was this about? You know, who was this about? And who was behind it? So a lot of this stuff is being revealed. A lot of this is coming to the surface, right? For us to know. Okay. So just, I don't know if you guys have looked into that. If you haven't, please make sure you sign up for my telegram group where I can post videos and proof and evidence of things that I can't say on here. So that is part of it. Part of it is these things being revealed. Um, another part of what's going on is uh, all of us, you know, there's this, <laughs> I did a video about, a, I don't know, last summer about uh, karma. Karma is coming. The, the, it was the last eclipse. It was in, um, I think that was April or May. Uh, let's see, it would have been eight, May. So, um, those last two eclipses, one of them was the eclipse of karma and how karma is becoming more instant. It's this feeling of time is speeding up. And when people are doing something negative, it's coming right back at them, smacking them in the face. It's like, you know, you're, you're you put your head out the car window and you spit and it goes whack right into your face. That's what's going on with a lot of uh, negative uh, behaviors and events that are taking place with people. So it's, uh, it's happening much faster. Things are happening much faster. And that means all of us have things in our face that we have to deal with, like it or not, right? If we've been hiding for something or avoiding something, it's coming up. It is right there for us to 
cope with. So if we've been afraid of something, if we've been avoiding something, if there's been some fears about money, fears about resources, fears about relationships, it's all coming up for us to look at. Like sometimes people stay in relationships that are really bad because they're afraid of being on their own. And it's, these are the kinds of things that are, we can't hide from them anymore. It's like, well, this is, I can't deal with this anymore. Right. Or I, I, this just, there's an, a, a lack of alignment in this relationship, this partnership, or this, there's a lot of things, right? Could be a lot of different things. It could be something to do with work. It could be about uh, friends. It could be about communication. It could be about family, any area of your life where things are coming up and you can't just run away <laughs> or you may have a coping mechanism. And we, you know, we all have coping mechanisms. It doesn't make anybody wrong or bad. That is uh, how we have historically in our lives learned to deal with problems and issues. And some of those are not serving. They're not working anymore. Right? So even if your coping mechanism has been to not cope, to, to just, you know, disassociate and to leave and to not deal with stuff, it is now time where you're going to need to face those things. We all need to deal with what's, uh, what's, what's there in order that we can break through it. That's what's going to take us to the next level. That's going to help us level up our lives. And there is a huge leveling up that is coming. There's a really, really big leveling up that is coming. So speaking of that, let's talk about the 12 houses, right? And what's happening to each of the signs. So if you're an Aries or the eclipses in your first house, which would mean you have Aries rising. So if you have it, you know, make sure if you don't know your rising sign, you can go to astro.com and just go put in your, uh, your, your birth date and time and pull up your chart and the rising sign. And then you'll see this chart with this 12 pieces of pie and your rising sign. Also in the, there's these, uh, there's a grid and it, it has all these things. It, it's ASC, the ascendant and whatever sign is in that box is your sign is your rising sign. Also the, uh, the sign, I don't know if this is your right, but on your right to the right side of the chart, on the horizon, that's your rising sign. So that is the ascendant and that it's also known as the ascendant. And so this is what I'm talking about because this is going to give you an idea of where in the, how this eclipse will affect you. Right? So, um, if, if the eclipse is in your first house, right? So that would mean you had, um, Taurus rising because the eclipse is in Taurus. So most likely you could, I mean, if it's in the first house, if it's in the very, if you know enough to understand that, if it's in your first house, then this eclipse is going to have some impact on how you are presenting yourself and how people see you. And it could, if there's anything that you've not been completely forthright or honest about, if there's anything that's been buried, it will come to the surface. Um, also, it can be things to do with your, you know, your presentation of yourself and your image. So, um, it can be, uh, like a makeover or an improvement of your image, uh, you know, clearing things up, getting to the bottom of something that might be, a uh, be influencing your, the way you look, maybe it has to do with a new, uh, health program. Although this is not really a health related eclipse. It's just, it might be bringing you in insight that helps you get to the bottom of something that may give you some some, something that was hidden about something to do with your appearance or the way people per see you that is coming to your awareness. Like maybe you didn't know that you always, when you're talking, you go, um, uh, mm, um, uh, mm, uh, mm, and it made people not take you seriously. Right. And so it, you might get that insight back at you that says, you know, when you do that, when you're saying, um, uh, mm, mm, all the time it makes you sound like you don't really know what you're saying, that you're not clear about what you're thinking. You're not, you're not taking yourself seriously. Your message isn't well thought out and people aren't taking it that seriously. So perhaps you might want to learn to remove those from your speech patterns. Okay. So that's one example. It could be something else about the self presentation and the way you are expressing yourself and something that is coming up and being revealed that helps you to improve that and to clear out anything that might be causing you problems. If this is happening in your second house, it's a double whammy because this is a Taurus, uh, eclipse and it would be the second house naturally. Taurus naturally rules the second house. So if it's happening in your second house, if your chart, it means that it's very much about your resources, very much about what you own, what you have, what you control, what is under your, you know, steam, your power. So this is, 
uh, probably bringing something up about ways in which perhaps, I don't know, maybe you're getting uh, overcharged for something or someone is secretly charging. You have some old uh, like bills that are not, not yours or um, something is draining your resources in some way, some secret, something hidden. Maybe someone stole from you. Uh, maybe someone tried to go behind your back and hack your, your accounts or something like that could be coming to the surface um, and revealing hidden secret uh, stuff that is uh, not good around finances. But the good news is you can catch them, right? Anybody who's uh, intuitive and on top of their game I mean, I know that this happened for me recently. I was able to catch somebody and uh, turn them over to the police for something they were doing. And <laughs> I might look all nice and sweet, but don't mess with me, right? You're going to get the, the stick. So uh, you just put you right into the police. So the police are uh, taking care of that person. So um, this is the kind of thing that you might be dealing with um, if you uh, have you know, something is, doesn't seem right in your finances, go out and catch them, turn them over, throw them, throw them under the bus because that's what they're trying to do to you. Okay. There's somebody who might be trying to get in and undermine you. Okay. And if you don't feel right in any relationships, there's resources, real resources are at risk. If this is happening in your second house, there is the risk of something, a trick being pulled on you around resources. This is why it's a really bad time to buy a house, right? Of course, this isn't financial advice. I can't give financial advice, but the reason I'm saying this is because the way that the uh, interest rates are set up and the way that the loans are being made and these sort of uh, rate, you know, buy but bow downs on rates on interest loans and on houses and things like that. People who are buying houses right now could be put into a trap, basically. It's essentially 100% a trap. There's literally almost, it kind of depends on where you are. I mean, if you're a cash buyer and you're buying a piece of property and you're getting a great deal on it, maybe it's okay. But in general, it's people getting trapped and strangled into a mortgage where they're gonna, it's gonna take all their money and then they'll probably lose the house. That's essentially what's going on in almost all of these mortgage deals. Same thing with a car. Uh, don't buy, don't make big purchases right now. This is not a good time because there are traps, there are tricks. And of course the biggest tricksters are the big companies, right? Because we have all these big corporations that have so much power now, nobody is checking them. There's not a strong enough uh, legal checking system. There was, there used to be, there used to be, you know, people who are, you know, consumer rights advocates who would go out there and fight for you and stuff like that. That's not really a thing anymore. So we need stronger people like that to come out. Well, the system is going to collapse and that's going to be sort of another deal. But right now, just be very careful because there are people um, out there trying to undermine and uh, use people, take advantage of people and take their stuff. And if it's in your second house, you need to be extra, extra careful of those scams out there because someone might be trying to yank some money out of you, right? So be careful on that. Uh, and then the third house, if this is happening, so the second house would be you know, generally in Taurus, if you're a Taurus, you need to watch out for this stuff, right? And the first house, when I talked about the first house, that was generally the Aries stuff, which has to do with the way you present yourself and the way you're seen and stuff being removed that could be an issue there. And then the third house is communication. Now I use that example for Aries about saying these words, but communication is words, but it's a lot more than that. It's, um, you know, if you're, this is the Gemini house, right? So if, if you're a Gemini, uh, if you have prominent Gemini placements, this would be what I'm talking about. Or, or if this eclipse is happening in the third house of your of your chart, especially this would be valid. So this can be some information, some knowledge, and it could come through a neighbor or a sibling, you know, brother or sister, or um, possibly a coworker, but most likely a neighbor or a sibling, somebody that you run into in your like day-to-day -day routines where you're running around town, you could learn something. You'll learn a secret. It could be a secret about you. It could be a secret about something you're involved with. It could be a secret about people you know, but you're going to learn some information. Some information is going to come out that's going to 
sort of change things and maybe like be a big light bulb moment. You could learn something about a neighbor or a sibling. Something could come to the surface that is a surprise and a shock, and it probably has something to do with their money and their resources. Something that has most likely to do with somebody, you know, you could hear, oh, so-and-so down the street got taken to jail for embezzlement, or, you, you know, so-and-so got went bankrupt, or such-and-such such lost their house. You're going to be getting those kinds of messages, that kind of news, and it's in your environment, in your you know, your world, your neighborhood or your um, family, right? Sub siblings. This is specifically about brothers and sisters. So that's the kind of news, the kind of information that's coming to the surface uh, and probably has by now because the eclipse is now. So a lot of these eclipse events have been building up to now. And then this is sort of the culmination of it. And there can be aftermath in the following three months. You'll, be, you'll hear a lot more about it over the coming three months. So eclipse events, they start, you know, about three months in advance, become very intense two weeks before the eclipse. And then the three days leading up to the eclipse is the most intense. Of course, the day of is, is the, you know, pinnacle of it. Sometimes it peaks right ahead. Sometimes it peaks on it. It's just different for different people. So... Um, that would be what's going on if you're Gemini, right? You're getting some sort of secret information. Some, something's being revealed and it is of a financial nature and it can involve some kind of scams, lies, and disorder uh, like what I was talking about earlier. Make sure you listen to all of them because I think they're all going to be relevant. So then, of course, if this eclipse is in your fourth house, which would be the cancer house and the house of your home, it's the roots of your chart. It's your and if it's right at the bottom of your chart, this will be extra, extra strong. So right on that line on the bottom, that's called the nadir. It's your emotional roots. It's the basis of your personality. It's the most important things that you need as a human. So it's going to have something to do with your home. It's going to have some impact on your living situation. Something could come up that's a unexpected in your home. You might learn something about somebody in your home. Um, I will give you an example of a friend of mine who is a cancer and what happened to her is she, what happened in her life is she learned, she has, she's beautiful, right? She's an amazing person. She has kids over to her house all the time and she pretty much feeds the whole neighborhood. She like feeds all these kind of, you know, and mostly the teenage boys because she has a boy. We both have boys. And uh, she learned about a boy who was essentially, uh, you know, leaving his family because it's uh, it's unsafe and he's trying to go to Child Protective Services and trying to get some help. So she, again, more like stuff that just breaks my heart. So she's helping him out, right? She's doing things for him. So this is yeah, of course, <laughs> with the cancer stuff, it just gets to me, all that emotional stuff. But uh, it's not all going to be about that, but it can be family. It can be things that are very emotional, things that come up because that is the nature of cancer. Of course, my moon is in cancer, so I have a lot of that in my own chart, so I feel it strongly. And it will bring up uh, stuff about lost children because cancer is very much about abandonment. So this is a very specific example, but uh, stuff about things that are going on with children, things children and what they need, uh, things of that nature. It's not just children. Cancer is also the home, uh, the mother and the nurturer and uh, the mother energy. That is very much cancer stuff. So there can also be information coming up about people's mothers, uh, people's, you know, you know, family stuff. Okay. So that's the fourth house, right? That one's the big emotional one. <laughs> that's the most emotional one of all. And then the fifth house is uh, Leo. And that's, uh, you know, is the fifth house of Leo, which is also about children, can be about children, art, creative projects, and it can bring information to the surface about children. Hey, someone could find out you have a kid or you have a, uh, a, uh, um, like a sibling, an adopted sibling that was put up for adoption, that kind of thing which that actually, I was in a coffee shop and I overheard a whole family sitting down and talking. They were reuniting because they were, the woman was uniting with the baby that she had given up for adoption years ago and they were meeting their siblings. And I was just sort of off to the side and I heard the whole thing. I was like, wow, that was some, and that is the, uh, a pattern for the, uh, Leo, um, eclipse for, for, I mean, not the Leo eclipse for this eclipse for Leo people. You could hear something like this, could have something to do with children, also creative projects. Maybe there's some artwork or some creative output that you did in the past that was 
that disappeared, that was taken from you, that, uh, you know, evaporated somehow, um, that will come back. Okay. That, that could be coming back to you or something about it. Some news about it could be, uh, coming back to you because this is about revealing things that have been hidden or have been secret, or you might not have known where it was or what happened to it. Just know all of those things, anything that was taken or went away in that way, it comes back. The universe is concerned. Spiritual energy is concerned with reunion and bringing back those who are of our heart and the things that are our own output that will come back to you. That is a spiritual law. You know, we don't, I know that there were years in my life where I did a lot of work and I put a lot of things out there and I created, I kept creating projects and nothing ever seemed to feel like it came from it. I just felt like I was just putting my energy out, putting my energy out, putting my energy out and I was exhausted. And then it started coming back later in different ways. So just know that the energy always comes back. You put that energy out, it will come back to you. The things that you have, and, and even if something was taken from you, it will come back to you. Okay. So be aware. And this can have a lot to do with, again, like I said, children, um, you know, family, things like that, mostly children and creative projects. And of course, you know, yourself, your own identity. Maybe somebody had identity theft. Then when someone stole your identity and tried to use it, that will come back to you, right? That will get straightened out. You will get all your stuff back. It will come back to you. So this is what is going on uh, on the Leo area of this. And it's uh, very challenging for Leos because the eclipse is squaring Leo. So that means because the eclipse is in Taurus, so Leo's it would be most tense. Most of a, it has something to do with, it could have a lot to do with your sense of self and your sense of who you are and what you believe in and what you, how, you know, how you are seen in the world. And like, it could be, uh, it could be, it could have hurt. It could have been uh, a real, like whatever it is could have, uh, been difficult. And what I'm saying is things are coming back and the things that were wronged will be revealed and will be set right. So that's good news for Leo's. Even if it might feel difficult for a while, just know that that which, you know, everything that which is yours will come back to you. It always will come back to you and it is coming back to you. So that's what's going on for the fifth house for Leo and the sixth house would be Virgo, right? That would be the Virgo house. So what's going on for Virgo and the sixth house, which is, um, health routines, day-to-day -day habits is that, uh, and this will be very helpful is that there can be uh, a revealing of problems, a revealing of health issues, getting to the bottom of things that have been causing you delays, uh, hardships, difficulties in getting around difficulties in your daily routine. You'll find out what's going on. You'll get to the bottom of it. You'll finally figure out what was wrong. What was it that was causing that health problem? And you can start to heal it because it takes knowing what it is in order to clear it out of the way. So the truth of what's been the issue is going to come to the surface here and you'll be able to make a difference in your routines, make a difference in your health, make the necessary changes and stop eating whatever it was or stop doing whatever it was or whatever it is, you will be able to make those necessary changes. This could also have to do with a job or a work situation where something that was uh, undermining you or causing you problems in your job. Maybe you had somebody who was behind your back saying crap about you that wasn't true. You'll be able to get to the bottom of it. You'll be able to confront it. You'll be able to clear it and get it out of the way. So there's stuff going on there in the sixth house that uh, will give you freedom, right? And will help you to get to the bottom of the problem once and for all and get it out of your way. So that's good news for you Virgo people or people with the eclipses happening in your sixth house, right? So this is going to be very helpful to you. Um, and then we move on to the seventh house, which would be the uh, Libra house, right? The seventh house is the house of partnerships and balance and crisis that we have to find balance around. What this is doing for Libras and Libras also ruled by Venus like Taurus. So it's a very, it's got similarities with the, with the Taurus energy. So what's happening, um, if this is happening in your seventh house, information, uh, facts, something that may have been hidden related to a contract or, um, a, a partnership or maybe a divorce, maybe, a um, even a, business partner or any kind of legal thing that is going on in your life will be revealed. There are anything that's been obscured, secret, or hidden in your life that has a legal element to it, or that is about justice and fairness. The 
hidden information is coming to the surface. That which has been buried is, is coming up. We're getting to the bottom of things in every area of our life. All these sort of hidden things are coming up, but for Libras, and if this is happening in your seventh house specifically, this will bring in a lot of stuff about rebalancing contracts, getting what's right, getting what's fair and finding out, Oh wait, this contract was, you know, somebody was doing something wrong in the contract. If there was laws being broken, you know, like I said about this person who was trying to go behind my back, who is now turned over to the police, you want to turn legal issues over to the authorities so that they can get to the bottom of them because this is happening, right? There is an element of this that is taking place. It's not happening in every area like we would like to see in the world, but for those of us personally, on a personal level, we can get some justice and we can find the hidden information we need in order to get that justice. If something is owed to you, if there's money owed to you, if you have a contract somewhere, or if someone, you know, abused a contract and didn't pay you, all of these are the things where, you know, it may take a little bit of detective work to get to the bottom bottom of it and to find out where that hidden uh, money is, you can get it back though. Okay. It's coming back to you and you will get what's yours out of this. You will get what's fair. There will be justice served in these situations. So, you know, justice is coming, right? So this is something very important to Libra. So I want to see you all getting justice and also the seventh house, right, is all about partnerships and balance in partnerships. If things have been out of balance, if you had a partnership where things were completely one-sided, it's time to rebalance that. And so, so this is about also rebalancing the scales in relationships, even past relationships that are no longer in your life. There will be a rebalancing of the scales that is taking place. So if something is owed to you, it can come back now. And this is all, but it's not, I'm not saying it's coming back today right now. It could still take quite a bit of time for all of this to get sorted out, but the information that is needed, the hidden stuff is being revealed, is coming to the surface so that you can get it fixed, right? So that's what's happening. And so that's good news. And then, uh, next is the eighth house, which is Scorpio, the Scorpio house, which is opposite Taurus. These are the two financial signs, signs, Taurus and Scorpio. So the eighth house is, um, all about like, the stock bond, you know, crisis stuff that's going on. People screaming and yelling about what's happening in these, in these areas. Well, you know, the Taurus eclipse is revealing information about what's really going on behind the scenes in the stocks, bonds, and treasuries and helping people to get a grasp on it in their minds. And so, Talking about these group financial situations, I need to mention, and I'm going to do a video on this, but just know that there's a problem with treasuries. A lot of people are moving their money into treasuries, especially big money, um, putting money in treasuries because they're um, getting a, a good yield, right? The interest rate is over 5%. So they're getting money on that and they want yield on their money. And the stock market is a little scary to many people. So the, and I don't work the stock market at all. I don't like it. I expect it eventually to completely crash and it will. I'm not saying this week though. I'm saying that it will completely crash, but the issue with treasuries and the problem with treasuries is that if you're buying treasuries, that means you are counting on the government to stay in business, right? So I don't think they will. Uh, I can't tell you when they're going to collapse in this particular video, but if you buy a treasury, forever how long that treasury is until maturity, that's how long your money's <laughs> wrapped up. So you're loaning money to the government if you buy a treasury. So it's uh, it's much higher risk than people think. So that's just a, a heads up on what that uh, idea is. But however, so Scorpio isn't always about you know, stocks, bonds, and money and treasuries and things like that. Although a lot of Scorpios are, a lot of Scorpios do work in financial areas. Um, or detective work or, uh, you know, p dealing with people at very intense areas of their life, life, death, rebirth, uh, real estate, buying people, buying, selling people homes. So all of this is a, is on the highlight for Scorpio to be aware that there are things that are coming to the surface in all of those arenas, like any type of work you do that relates to any of these fields 
will have secret and hidden information coming out about it. So you need to be extra careful, also careful with contracts, also examining things carefully for the hidden and the, you know, really do your detective work that you're so good at as a Scorpio. Scorpios are natural born detectives. So really get to the bottom of things, get, uh, trust your instincts. Your instincts are sharp as a, you know, as a sore, as a razor blade right now, trust those because things don't feel right that you need to go with that because there's something going on. If something feels fishy, something looks fishy, it's fishy. So you're, um, you're being asked to really dive into and trust your intuition here. Scorpio along with Taurus is one of the most psychic signs out there. So you really have that, uh, that intuition happening, that instinct. So really, uh, you know, follow that because it's, it's onto something. I would tell you that right now there's some, some stuff you're getting messages and there's something that you're really onto that is happening. Uh, that's that you would be able to get to the bottom of sort of like what happened with me where someone was trying to, you know, scam me and I caught him and threw him into the police. You can do that too, because you have that, um, that instinct to get to the bottom of what's going on and what doesn't feel quite right. So if you have any inkling that something doesn't seem right, I want you to dive in, dig in, get to the bottom of it, get the facts, figure it out. Um, your instinct is right. There's something there and I want you to pull out the truth because you're going to get it and you're going to, uh, you know, you're going to, you're going to get to the bottom of it and you'll get it solved and fixed. So, uh, but also another thing that's going on with, with Scorpio is because the eclipse is opposite you, there can be a lot of financial drama problems and issues happening in your partnerships. So people you're in partnership with, whether that's good friends or, you know, like a best friend or, you know, a, a partner, uh, you know, a, a, a husband or wife, um, boyfriend, girlfriend, that kind of thing. They can be having big financial issues. Also, you need to be extra careful if someone close to you might not be trustworthy. I'm not saying that they are not to be trusted, but be careful because there may be someone untrustworthy in your close circle. Unfortunately, that would be a close person. So be careful that because the eclipse is happening around the, the, the seventh house for you or around, you know, partnership issues for you, right? So it's, it's connected to the Libra stuff, not exactly the same, but, uh, it is connected, but for you, especially be careful and be aware of whatever might be going on with a partner. A partner could be, there could be some scams happening to a partner or from a partner. That's the big warning for Scorpio people. All right. And then, uh, but you'll be all right. You, your instincts will get you to the bottom, right? Okay. So let's move on to Sagittarius, the ninth house. So travel, right? Things that are going on abroad. Um, that was what I just spoke about Acapulco, right? The devastation happening in Acapulco, the devastation happening in Gaza. This is sad and tragic and horrible. And absolutely my heart goes out just as much to all the people in Gaza. I mean, it's just horrible. Nobody needs to be dying over in that part of the world. Where is the peace effort? Where are people going in there trying to talk through this? And the Palestinians are literally trapped. They can't get out. They're trapped on four sides. So, um, I am really, you know, it's a real tragedy what's going on. Um, in that part of the world. So this is what this eclipse is. It brought up, uh, this, you know, W, you know, this war that we're going into. Okay. That's what this eclipse is. But for people where that is happening in their ninth house, you probably have people abroad who are having some crazy chaotic experiences happening in their lives. You may be getting news. Maybe you are connected to people in uh, some of these countries or some of these areas. Um, so these things, uh, could be f affecting you in that way. Also, it could have a lot to do with, it could have an impact on, um, foreigners, you know, people, you know, from abroad and overseas, that's one aspect of, uh, of the ninth house, but it can also be bringing up issues. And, and, you know, because there's trickery, uh, afoot with this lunar eclipse, we know that what we're being told in the news and the media isn't true, right? There's trickery. There's another real story behind what we're being told because that's just the nature of a lunar eclipse. It's bringing up the secrets. So, 
The other thing that could be going on for people with this eclipse in the ninth house is stuff to, and this brings us back to the student loan stuff and things that have to do with uh, school and education, right? Trickery afoot around that, something going on with those financial, sh there be com I, there's some sort of financial shenanigans going on with this student loan repayment. That's all I have to say for that subject. But with you personally, there could be something up with your student loan debt or with something to do with you going to school or something to do with your education. Something's being revealed. Something's coming to the surface about education you've gotten, um, something about it that you didn't know, something that was hidden, something that was uh, maybe fraudulent, something that was maybe a trick. Okay. Something, there's something there. Okay. There's something there and you want to dig into it and you want to look at it. Make sure your institution was that you got your degree from was accredited. Make sure that the, the loans were, you know, valid, whatever it is. I don't know what it is, but there can be something to do with education going. And, and by the way, we could see, still see in the next few months, something happen in the education system. Okay, that there's a lot going to happen with the education system and stuff that's going to come to the surface eventually about, you know, trickery in the educational financial side of the system. So, but for you, for people with it happening in the ninth house, this has to do with uh, people, you know, abroad, foreigners, uh, maybe immigrating to other countries, uh, visas, things like that. And also, of course, like I said, your school, right? Your schooling. So that is... That is ninth house. And then moving on to the 10th house, which is the Capricorn house. And if it's happening in your 10th house, this is your career. This is the hard work you've done, the things you've you've put out there. So any people, who, and this is also politicians, a lot of politicians who have lied and who have uh, gotten there in secret ways, those secret dealings are gonna be coming to the surface, right? A lot of that is, and this is aftermath that is coming from the eclipse event, but People who are, you know, for you personally, if this is in your 10th house or if you're a Capricorn, this information that is being revealed is going to bring something up about uh, your career and your money and your finances in your career and what may have been uh, maybe... You know, you weren't getting money you should have gotten. There's, uh, there's some, there's some thing about also you didn't get credited, something you should have gotten credited for in your career. And that's going to get, uh, fixed. You can start to get that fixed. So that information is starting to be revealed and be straightened out so that Capricorns can get their due credit for the hard work they've put in. Also, uh, you know, if it's in your, you don't have to be a Capricorn, but if this eclipse is in your 10th house, this is giving you, uh, some, all that stuff, all that benefit in your career, right? It's revealing something that has been secret or hidden. Maybe even a person who's been behind, who's been, uh, like working against you in your career that could bring that to the surface. Right. And, and so obstructions, obstacles, um, enemies, people under, you know, undermining you, that's going to be going away. That's going to be brought to the surface and that will be removed. So that's, uh, that's what's happening for Capricorn. So, uh, you know, blessings to you for that. And then I wish you the best on that one. And then as we move on to the, uh, 11th house, which is Aquarius, the Aquarius house, this is going to be an eclipse that it's a little rough for you, just like it was for Leo, because, uh, it's squaring you. I mean, it's a little rough for Scorpio too, but so in the 11th house, this has to do with your, your, your reputation. I mean, the 10th house has a reputation as well. And by the way, going back to the 10th house really quickly, the 10th house, um, people who deserve to have their reputations tarnished, the secrets are coming out. I mean, I kind of said that before, but for the 11th house, it's not so much reputation as it is your social circle, your friends, uh, your network of people that you know in your life. And this is, uh, and also your work with technology and, uh, any connection to the internet. So things could be brought to the surface about, you know, on the internet, like secrets and hidden things are coming up in through the internet, also through friends, through friend groups. So uh, in your extended group of friends, you would be hearing something that comes to the surface. That's a secret or hidden piece of information that it's, it's less personalized as it was in the Gemini thing where it was more localized family and friends, so, you know, siblings and neighbors. Um, but you, for you, it's the larger network of your social group, right? And there could be stuff going on that could in fact be 
a large group of people involved. It could be a club, an association of some sort, some networking situation where boom, some sort of, uh, like sudden unexpected information comes up or some sudden unexpected change happens to the network because in the network of people, because of unexpected news or information, truth, this is also the ultimate truth. These are the big ace of swords, like bam, truths, the big truth. So Aquarius can in fact be the holder of the sword, who is like, this is the truth and cutting through all the garbage and wielding that, that sword of truth to cut through the red tape and the lies. So some of you are massive, powerful truth tellers. Some of you are going to come out and just like whack through the underbrush, the jungle of lies and bring the truth forward. So there's some of you who are incredibly galvanizing, mesmerizing, fantastically powerful speakers and leaders. And, um, and this is true for Leo's also, but I'm really getting this about Aquarius that this has to do with absolutely cutting through and getting and ruthlessly and getting to the heart of the matter and bringing that truth forward. So blessings to you. If that's you, uh, you are divinely protected with that. Um, so that's my message for Aquarius. And even if it's not quite so personalized and it's just something that's happening in your network of friends, and it's also social movements and being involved in those social movements and being part of people who are speaking the truth. This is a massive, massive time of awakening of the truth and awakening of the truth tellers and the people who are following them and building them up and bringing that strength. So you don't have to be the person on the stage to be part of a really powerful movement towards truth. So this is happening, this big, big groundswell movement of truth. And I can feel some of these are coming over the next three months. You're going to see some, and there've been massive protests around the world against what's happening to the Palestinians. So this is not the only thing, uh, but there's a lot of wham, truth coming. And so for you, that's happening in the, in the 11th house, you know, I, God bless you because it's a hard job and, but it's also so important and so necessary. You guys are absolutely doing God's work by cutting through and moving the, moving the mountains in order to bring the truth out and gathering people around truth. So this is really beautiful. And I'm really, really proud of you. Um, if this is you. So, and then, uh, the 12th house moving on to the Pisces house, which is, uh, you know, uh, dreams and the subconscious and sort of the energetic field. It's a lot in a lot of ways, it's the etheric field. It also has a lot to do with precious metals, gold and silver. So, um, if this is happening in your 12th house, this is absolutely things you are complete. You're going to be blindsided by something that comes out. Some, some truth that comes out that is sudden and totally unexpected. Whatever truths are being revealed for those of you with that 12th house, uh, eclipse, it is, is something coming out of your subconscious, something coming out of a part of your mind that you had no idea that that was happening. It was behind your awareness. It was absolutely buried and secret to you. So, um, you know, this is a very shocking and sudden thing, but it's also, you know, in the good, the good news is that this can of course bring up a lot of movement in, uh, our resources, the things that we have that are actually worth things that we didn't really think about, like, you know, food, if we grow food, if you have, you know, precious metals, uh, this is sort of revealing the actual value of these things and making it much more, uh, real. There's a lot of people out there who are suddenly kind of going, wow, there's war going on. Maybe I, what is a safe haven asset? What do I buy? That's a safe haven asset. Well, they're all the things that are ruled by Pisces, you know, gold, silver, food, livestock, all, you know, all food supplies, all of these things are the things that are and a, you know, hello also, you know, this is, uh, some, some of the more gray area things, but like certainly alcohol is another one that is a Pisces thing. Unfortunately, a, Pisces has a tendency to go too far in that direction, but these are all things that are actually real value. They have real value. They're real things that can be really traded for traded for something else that is a real thing that can be worth something. Right. So, but there's also that spiritual energetic aspect of Pisces, which is, um, can bring some really blindsided truth. Some things that are coming out of unex completely unexpected that are bringing up 
something that is true, something that has been hidden, something that has been buried. And it may be time to face something that you hadn't been aware of uh, at this time. So this can be very sudden and unexpected for Pisces people. However, this can be the time, you know, or people where this is happening in the 12th house. And by the way, it could also mean that some Pisces in your life has some big major change in their world. This is true for all of the 12 signs I went through, but um, it, whatever house it's in, this could describe a Pisces, per, a person of that house. So like if it's the fifth house, it could describe a Leo having some crazy stuff happen. Happening. If, if it's happening in whatever house of your chart, it could describe someone you know who is that sign. So um, so this is, but with Pisces, this is, uh, it could also mean um, something, it can also have something to do with health for Pisces, but it's a lot less specific. It's a lot less about your routines or your day-to-day -day stuff. It's more like this weird amorphous, not knowing what's causing the health, and it could be just an energetic imbalance. It's That's more likely to be the issue with Pisces. If there is a health problem, something that's coming up is an energetic thing of a return of energy in some way that needs to be rebalanced in your system. So if there's some health thing that's a problem, you're going to need to, maybe there's something you need to stop doing that's energetic, that's causing problems for you. So you don't want to be, you know, I mean, make sure you're getting enough sleep and things like that, right? That's an energy. You need to make sure you're getting your energies up. So this has to do with the energy uh, with Pisces. So it's much more, less, much less specific, much less definable. Pisces is always the hardest sign to define because it's the last sign of the Zodiac. And I always, if you line up, if you put a room full of Pisces people together, you would not know what they had in common. They're like the the leftovers, the, I mean, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but it's the, um, it's, it's the, it's the, it's the, like, we didn't know what to do with all these pieces, you know, and, and this is our, this is the last, we're going to group them all together in Pisces. So like Pisces gets all these leftover parts. So they're sort of like very hard to say it's one thing because Pisces is a little of everything. It's a little of everything left over and pulled together in one thing, but it is that energetic spirit of it that, that ties it together, that bonds it together. So um, the point here is that uh, something can be coming out of left field, something unexpected for the Pisces people. And I don't know exactly what that is, but it's probably got to do with, um, you know, the things that were spoken about in the other signs, right? The things that have, especially if it has to do with resources and money and uh, justice around those things, getting things balanced in a fair way around the finances. So that's it. That's all 12 signs. And um, yeah, so that's it. I don't have more except for please go and look at the Anarchapulco stuff, the Acapulco stuff. Look at donating to the the people who are trying to help in Acapulco because it's a very real thing. There's definitely real people being uh, endangered and harmed in, in that space and we want to do what we can to help them. So that is my final request. Please go down the links below for in the in the comments, the link for uh, Jeff Berwick's video um, about what's happening in Acapulco and also the links to donate are in his video. So that is uh, under his video. So please go there. And that's all I have for you guys. Um, I just wanted to share this with you on this big lunar eclipse and wish you all a beautiful day and that good things come you, your way this this next cycle of course we're getting the aftermath of this eclipse for the next three months so if you handle the areas that i've i've pointed to things are going to move in the right direction for you things are going to really be improving in the next three months so that's it and i will talk to you guys later bye bye